what's up? So today, uh, exciting day for me, um, I get to go to Tartesso Elementary to do a beekeeping presentation for their career day. Um, I'm going to be speaking to several classes, all fourth and fifth grade type age, but uh, I get to, you know, it's about half, half day long. I get to speak to several classes, they're going to rotate through. Um, I have my ladies here riding shotgun with me. If you don't know what that is, it's an observation hive. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm pretty excited about it. It's always great to uh, see the excitement on kids when they get to see bees in real life in a safe environment. And uh, kids that age, they, they love to hear about things like bees. You know, they're, they're in animals and bugs and all that kind of stuff. Um, so it's always fun to, to hear the, all the excitement from them, get them all riled up, and uh, maybe even get them in a little bit of trouble for being so hyper towards the end of the day. That's my goal, is to get them that excited. So. Anyway, uh, I'm driving there now. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little tired. I only got a few hours of sleep. Uh, I'm used to, I work nights normally, so I stay up pretty late on my days off. And I had to wake up at six this morning. I think I got to bed around two something. But anyway, I'm pretty wired, got my monster in me. Good to go, should be fun. Let's get all these kids hypered up. See you there. Thank you, sir. Anytime you're ready. Right on. Well. First of all, good morning. Who wants to learn about bees? No, I'm gonna have to hear it. Who wants to learn about bees? Bees! Yeah, that's what I like to hear. Lots of excitement, lots of energy. I had a monster this morning, so I'm gonna talk fast and have a lot of energy, okay? So don't get too scared. That's right for them. Good morning. good morning. Thank you very much, Career Day presenters, for being here today. We're very thankful. If you would like to get started in the next two minutes with your first presentation, you will be presenting to the class that you're currently in. And then every 20 minutes, we will rotate. You will stay in your classroom, and students will rotate to you. There will be a five-minute break between each presentation if you need to use the restroom or get anything organized, and then at 11.15, your greeter will come to your classroom and ask you if you will be joining us for lunch in the library. Our lunch is being catered by Panda Express. If you are not able to join us, that's absolutely fine. They will walk you to the office to sign out. We are very, very thankful you're here today. Let's have a great day. Right on. Okay, guys. like a 15-minute timer? What's that? 15-minute timer so you know if I didn't warn you kind of thing? That'll work. All right. All right, guys, so as I'm sure you've guessed, I am a beekeeper, right? Um, I've got my lovely ladies here with me today. They're my assistants to kind of show off. So my, what we call an apiary, which is a fancy term for my bee farm, right? We call it Hornbaker Acres because my last name is Hornbaker and I thought it sounded cool, okay? Uh, don't judge too much. So the first thing I want to talk about is a swarm. That's probably the most often that you're going to see bees out in the wild is when it's a swarm. Does anybody know what actually a swarm is? You, go for it. It's like a big group of bees. Big group of bees? Do you know why bee, Why do bees swarm? Anybody know why? Anybody? Go for it. They can stick it out. That's a good answer. So a swarm is the way that bees reproduce. What happens is in the hive, when they get enough bees in there and they start to get really full, the old queen and most of the bees will leave the hive to find a new home. The bees that are left behind will raise out a new queen, and therefore one hive becomes two. So this is what a swarm looks like. This is one of the swarms that I, I caught, okay? Um, it can be just bees. No comb, no nothing. When they're like this, they're not actually uh, trying to build a home there. They usually build their home inside a cavity, inside something, like inside a, a tree log, or inside the wall of a home, or in a mailbox. I've seen them build inside of a tire. Uh, I've seen them build in all sorts of crazy places, compost bins. But when they're just like this, they're just resting. And while they're resting there, they've got the queen right in the middle, keeping her nice and cozy. Uh, but while they're resting there, they're sitting on what we call scout bees. Basically bees that are flying all over the place, saying, is this a good home? Is this a good home? They find one that they think that they like, they come back, they do a little dance, because that's the way, one of the ways that bees communicate is they dance. And they also release pheromones, or certain scents, okay? And that's the way bees communicate as well, through scent. They smell each other, and they can tell by the, the smell that they put off. And that tells them that a good spot is this way, follow me. And then they all of a sudden, you'll see them by the thousands fly off towards a certain direction, 
and that's how they find a new home. So a swarm is simply a way that bees reproduce once that uh, hive that they're in gets overfull, overcrowded. Okay. So does anybody know the three types of honeybees in a colony? We're talking about just honeybees. What are the three different roles in a colony? Yes. Um, the queen bee, the the worker. The worker. Anybody know the third one? It's called the drone, and I'm going to talk about it in a second. A drone is a male bee. All the workers are female. The women do all the work, pretty much. Okay. Um, the drones are the male bees. I'm going to talk about them in just a second. Okay. So first, we have the queen. Like she said, she is the mother of the entire colony. Okay. Her whole job is to produce new bees. Okay. She lays up to 2,000 eggs per day, and she lives up to five years. What's fascinating about that is that she really never leaves the hive. So she made it once when she was brand new, she comes back to the hive, and then from that day she lays up to 2,000 eggs per day just to support the hive. And again, in the wild she typically lives about five years. So the next we have we call them worker bees. Again, they're all female. They make up pretty much the most of the hive. They do everything in the hive. They go out and collect nectar from flowers. They bring it back. They start making the honey. Um, they clean the hive. They clean debris and you know old dead bees out of there. They'll fly them out of there. Um, they'll guard the hive to keep pests and rodents and intruders out of the hive. They do everything. They're the only ones with stingers is the worker bees. Okay. Um, they, they protect, like I said, they protect the hive and it's, they do everything in the hive. So, drones, like I said, are male bees. They have absolutely no purpose within the hive. Uh, they do nothing for the hive. They just sit around and eat all day. What, one thing that they do is, because they don't even have a stinger, they don't protect the hive, nothing. They, they don't do anything for the hive. Their only purpose is to fly away from the hive and mate with queens from other hives. Their job is to spread their genetics, okay? Um, have you guys talked about genetics at all in your science yeah. classes? Yes? Okay, so their job is to spread their hive's genetics by flying away from it and mating with queens from other hives. So, what are some of the things that bees make? We probably all know it, the first one, right? Let's say it together. What's the first thing that bees make? Honey. There we go. Anybody know anything else that bees make? Go for it. Um, they make the comb. I can't remember what it is. They make honeycomb? the comb. Yeah. yeah. And anybody know what honeycomb is made out of? Wax. Wax. There we go. So they make bees wax. Can anybody think of anything else? Uh, maybe some candles. Out of the wax, right? Okay. So some of the other things that you know we talked about the honey, right? So why do you like honey? Does anybody in here really love honey? It's their favorite thing. Most people really like honey. Why do you like honey? It tastes good, right? It's sweet and yummy. The nice thing about it is it's super healthy for you. It is packed full of nutrients. It's one of those like really good candies, but it's really good for you as well. So um, it's just amazing stuff. And what they do is they collect nectar from the flowers. They'll collect it by drinking it, okay? They'll come back to the wax comb. They'll spit it in there and then they'll start each taking turns drinking it and spitting it back in. And what that does is it adds what we call enzymes or different nutrients, different properties to that nectar. They also use their wings to thin it. What they're doing is they're trying to dry it out. They have to get the, the nectar down to a certain what we call moisture content to get some of the moisture out of it. And once it's ready, that's when they'll start to cap it over and cover it with more wax. Um, but the purpose of honey in the hive is it's one of the food sources for the bees, right? Uh, so they store lots of honey, so that way when there is no flowers, like during the winter and stuff, they have stored food. Fascinating thing about honey is it never goes bad, ever. It's one of those rare foods that never goes bad. They found honey in 2,000 year old Egyptian tombs that was still good, okay? So that's, it's amazing stuff. Did you have a question on it? Yes. Um, do you by chance know how they make the honeycombs? Yeah, and I'm going to get to that in just a second, okay? So, 
Another thing that bees can do for us is they collect pollen, or what we call bee pollen. Right here, if everybody can see, can everybody see that? There's a little chunk on the worker bee's leg. That's pollen from a flower. What she does is while she's collecting nectar from flower to flower, she's getting pollen all over her fur because she's covered in fur. And she starts to use her legs and pushes all that pollen down to a special hair on her leg that's kind of covered in a greasy film on her, on her leg. And then what that does is jam packs a nugget of pollen. Um, the pollen is another food source for the bees, okay? The honey is what we call the, the carbohydrates of the colony, and the pollen provides the protein, okay? So that's another food source for them is this pollen. So the way that benefits us is for one, the bees are passing pollen from flower to flower, and that's how the flowers get pollinated and the flowers can reproduce, right? But also beekeepers can use these special pieces of equipment called pollen traps. It goes on the bottom of the hive right where the bees enter in. As the bees go in, it scrapes the pollen, some of the pollen off their legs. The beekeeper can then trap this pollen and have just you know, several pounds of pollen and collect it, and then you can eat it. And so the reason why people eat honey to help with allergies, right? Has everybody ever heard of that? You eat honey to help with your allergies, right? It's because of the pollen in the honey. That's what you're, what's helping you. Um, because people that have allergies, they're actually allergic to the pollen. So when you eat it or you consume the pollen, you're building up your body's immunities to those things that you're allergic to. Also, pollen itself is like a superfood. It actually has all the nutrients necessary to live off of. So you can technically live off of bee pollen alone for the rest of your life and be perfectly healthy. Now, it wouldn't be a very good life because it doesn't taste very nice, but some people will put it on their yogurt just to help give them a boost of energy, give them all sorts of nutrients and vitamins, and help with their allergies. So then the last thing like we are talking about is the beeswax. It's what the bees build their comb out of. The comb is used to store all of their food, but they also use it to raise their babies. That's when the queen lays her eggs, and the workers start to raise their babies in this honeycomb. Only the younger worker bees make it. Um, at that point, the bees are about a week or two old. They start to produce wax. I don't know if everybody can see that. They literally push the wax out of their butts, pretty much. Okay, out of their abdomen. Uh, they have special platelets right here, or dividers in their abdomen, that they push wax out of their body. Once they push this wax out, they just start to rub it on the comb that's already there, or rub it on a structure, and then they'll use their mouth and their feet to form it. What's fascinating is how perfect bees make, and you'll get a chance to come look at it in a second. Look at how perfect of a hexagon that honeycomb is, okay? And the way they decide that is they stick their heads in there as they're forming it. They stick their heads in there and they spread their feet out, and that's how they measure. They know exactly the size to do by the width of their feet, okay? Um, but the way it can benefit us is it's used in hundreds upon hundreds of products. Uh, lipstick, chapstick, all sorts of beauty products, hair products, lotions. Um, you can use it to seal foods. Like a lot of cheese companies, when they have the big blocks of cheese, the way they seal it is they dip it in beeswax, and that's a natural sealant. Uh, you can use beeswax to seal like wood, uh, make wood polish out of it. It's used in hundreds of products, and, and it's truly amazing. And it's edible. It doesn't taste very nice, but it is edible. Um, it provides a, a great, what we call, roughage. It helps you digest the rest of your food, okay? So the last thing that most people don't know about is what we call propolis. Basically, propolis is a sticky residue stuff, um, and you'll see it on my jacket. Uh, it gets everywhere that the bees produce. And they make it from the resin. They collect resin from trees, like tree sap type stuff. They collect it, and they'll mix it with other ingredients that their body produces. And They'll, they'll put it all over the hive. So think of propolis as uh, insulation or as caulk, like uh, you would seal a floor with caulk, right? That's kind of what propolis is, it's a sealant. If there's a crack in the hive, they'll fill it with propolis. Um, they'll also coat the entire inside of the hive with this propolis stuff, and the reason for it is it's naturally antibacterial and antifungal. So it's almost like putting hand sanitizer on, right? It's almost like coating the entire inside of the hive with hand sanitizer 
It helps keep the hive healthy and fight bacteria and fight diseases. Um, but the reason why it's beneficial for us is we can trap, as beekeepers, we can trap that as well using a special piece of equipment. We can trap some of this propolis. Now using that propolis, we can make uh, what we call a tincture, which is basically like a, uh, an ointment kind of thing, because it, because it is naturally antibacterial, uh, antifungal. We can use it to heal wounds, and heal burns, and treat infections, and all sorts of stuff. But you can also eat it because, again, just like everything else in the hive, it's super healthy for you. It has a lot of vitamins and minerals in it. But that's, this, this stuff right here is this propolis. It's just really sticky, tacky type stuff that gets all over everything while you're a beekeeper. My phone is, is constantly covered in it because I'm always taking pictures out of my bee yard of my bees and then I realize that I just covered my phone in this tacky, nasty stuff and then my wife yells at me and it's a whole mess. So, so what are some of the reasons bees are important? Yes? They produce honey, so you produce can honey. That's one. Okay, go ahead. Uh, they spread pollen, so more plants can grow, and so we have more oxygen. Exactly, right? Anything else? Um, they produce a lot of nutrients. Produce a lot of nutrients? Yes. Um, they have a special um, rule that can heal the burns and injuries. Um, exactly, go ahead. Um, Exactly. So bees are one of the, honestly, in my opinion, maybe it's because I'm a beekeeper. Probably the most important creature in this world are pollinators, which includes honeybees, right? We won't eat if we don't have bees. Let's just, it's quite simple. One third of all of our food, and I'm going to get into it, one third of all of our food is pollinated by pollinators such as honeybees. Does anybody know, and this is going to get off the bee topic for a second, anybody know any other pollinators besides honeybees? Yes? Butterflies, bats, hummingbirds, those are all great pollinators. But honeybees are different because beekeepers like me, we have tons of hives. So we can produce a bunch of pollinators to help pollinate crop fields, um, to help pollinate the local area and citrus fields and almond orchards and everything, right? So the point of it is, if we lost honeybees, we would be losing a huge food source. Okay? And it's not just the honey, but it's because of what they do to help produce um, all of our various fruits and vegetables. Anybody know why bees are struggling? Yes? They do sting and die. They do sting and die, right? Anything else? Why are bees struggling? Okay, so some of the reasons why... Does anybody know what monocropping is? I know it's a strange term. You forgot? Okay, so I know it's a, it's a term that you guys probably don't hear or have never heard. Monocropping is simply farming, where they, they cut down a bunch of natural forage area for the bees, and they put one type of plant in there, like corn. And so what they're doing is they're taking away a food source from the bees and providing only one style of food source instead of a, a variable food source. So they're also losing their natural habitat. And also, people are starting to use more and more pesticides and herbicides, which is really hurting the bees, okay? So, how can we help? So one thing that I want you to talk to your parents about is talk about using less chemicals in the house. Use more natural means to deal with pests, okay? We want to allow our wildflowers to grow in our yard, you know? We grow grass, but we should all also allow some area for wildflowers to grow. Also, you want to plant bee-friendly flowers um, around our homes, okay? And then, if you see a bee situation, like a swarm, don't worry, don't panic. Call a beekeeper to have them remove it. Any questions on that? I know I went through a lot of information very quickly, but I wanted to give you guys time to come up and look at my beautiful ladies up here. Um, so if you guys want to filter through, if, if you have any questions, come up and see me, okay, guys? Bye. So, uh, yeah, you saw one of the classes I spoke at. Um, it ended up being, I think, a total of eight classes that I gave the same presentation to. So I'm not going to lie, I'm a little tired. Um, but it's always exciting uh, seeing kids excited about something that I'm so passionate about.
to see that passion kind of uh, move on to them as well. Maybe foster that passion a little bit for them. Um, had lots of cool questions and a lot of interaction with the kids. So it was a really cool event. I'm really glad to have been invited to be part of it. Uh, I, I really hope to be part of more events like this in the future. So if you are in the West Valley area and you would like a beekeeper to come speak at your school, please get in contact with us through our website listed below. As always, say guys, truly appreciate all the love, kindness, and support that you show us here on YouTube and our Facebook page. Make sure you check us out there. God bless guys and happy beekeeping.